This is Aurore, the last and most remote of 33 low-lying islands that make up the Republic of Kiribati in the South Pacific. Scientists say that in the next 30 to 50 years, islands like this one will be underwater due to rising sea levels caused by global climate change. So what are people doing here now to prepare for a day when their country no longer exists? Bob Sorum is building a seawall to protect his house. While most of his neighbors have moved inland, he's determined to stay put. But for how long? One conservative estimate from the University of Colorado predicts that global temperature changes will cause sea levels to rise as much as two meters by the end of this century. For Kiribati's 100,000 residents who live on narrow strips of land just barely above sea level, it's a trend that spells disaster, says the country's president, Anote Tong. Already we have uh, whole villages being washed out that the sea is rising. There is no running away from that reality. As conditions worsen, Tong says many here, like 23-year-old fisherman Rubita Yobite, are finding it harder to produce the food they need to survive. It's getting hotter, which is affecting the food we grow. Before, our coconuts were big, but now they're as small as our fists. Coconuts are Kiribati's chief export. As they shrink in size and number, poverty is growing. Despite these pressures, Tong resists the idea of moving people off the islands en masse. Having lost our homeland, having lost our, our cultural identity, I don't think we want to lose our dignity. In what little time they have left, Tong plans to develop some of the islands and give his people the means to leave on their own accord. The idea is to encourage the development of the art islands. We just need to be able to provide them with the opportunity to skill and whatever equipment they need. But convincing development organizations to invest in a country that won't be around in 50 years is not easy. For the first time, the UN agency specializing in agricultural development, IFAD, sends a team to assess the situation on Kiribati's most remote southern island, Arore. We would like to understand some of the challenges that you face with the environment. There has been a lot of damage to trees. Wells are salty. There is erosion along the coastline. The president of the country is saying that the, the whole survival of the islands over the next 50 years is, is in question. A challenge that we face is, is what happens in, in the course of this 50 years. The IFAD team helps islanders develop a plan one that tackles some of their most immediate problems, like the intrusion of seawater, but also breaks new ground for those living on the front lines of climate change. This agricultural research center has been set up to help islanders produce food locally. The aim is to identify food crop varieties able to tolerate rising temperatures and grow in salty water. It's Tong's goal to turn islands like Arore into centers for food production growing crops that could help feed populations in places where the impact of climate change is advancing much more quickly. But these are just temporary measures. Tong says the real challenge is to make those countries contributing to climate change take responsibility for its effects. This represents the, the single biggest moral challenge to humankind. And if it doesn't respond to this, then there is no credibility to anything. 